the poison of life, the society will say to you, be yourself, but not like that. My name is Khadi the Possibilitarian, and I have a question for you. Who were you before you became who the world told you to be? Who were you? I would like to quote some interesting and really groundbreaking words from Clennon's book, Untamed, which really will set the tone for what I would like to talk about and I would like to share with you today. And I quote, The age 10 is when children begin to hide who they are in order to become what the world expects them to be. Right around 10 is when we begin to internalize our formal taming. 10 is when the world set me down, told me to be quiet, and pointed toward my cages. These are the feelings you are allowed to express. This is how a woman should act. This is the body you must strive for. These are the things you will believe. These are the people you can love. Those are the people you should fear. This is the kind of life you're supposed to want. Close quote. And I think this is why human beings resist life. To be alive seems to be the greatest fear humans have. Death is not the biggest fear we have. Our biggest fear is taking the risk to be alive. The risk to be alive and express what we really are. Just being ourselves is the biggest fear of humans. We have learned to live our lives trying to satisfy other people's demands. We have learned to live by other people's points of views because of the fear of not being accepted and of not being good enough for someone else. And during It is during this process of taming that we form an image of what perfection is in order to try to be good enough. We create an image of how we should be in order to be accepted by everybody. We especially try to please the ones who love us, like mom and dad, big brothers and sisters, the priest and the teacher. Trying to be good enough for them, we create an image of perfection. But the thing is, we don't fit this image as we try to be good enough for them. We create this image, but the image is not real. We are never going to be perfect from this point of view. Never. And in not being perfect, we start rejecting ourselves. And the level of self-rejection depends upon how effective the adults were in breaking our integrity. Our taming, it's no longer about being good enough for anybody else. We are no longer even good enough for ourselves because we don't fit with our own image of perfection. We can't forgive ourselves for not being what we wish to be or rather what we believe we should be. We can't forgive ourselves for not being perfect. We know we are not what we believe is supposed to be and so we feel false, frustrated and dishonest. We try to hide ourselves and we pretend to be what we are not. And the result is that we feel inauthentic and we start wearing social masks to keep others from noticing this. We are so afraid that somebody else will notice that we are not what we pretend to be. We judge, us, we judge others according to our image of perfection as well and naturally they fall short of our expectations. And we dishonor ourselves just to please other people. We even do harm to our physical bodies just to be accepted by others. You see teenagers taking drugs just to avoid being rejected by other teenagers. They are not aware that the problem is not that they don't, the problem is that they don't accept themselves. They reject themselves because they're not what they pretend to be. They wish to be a certain way, but they're not. And for these, they carry shame and guilt. Humans punish themselves. As humans, we punish ourselves endlessly for not being what we believe we should be. Humans become very self-abusive and they use other people to abuse themselves as well. But nobody abuses us more than we abuse ourselves. And it is the judge, the victim and the belief system that make us do this. The truth is, we find people who say their husband or wife or mother or father or partner abuse them. But you know... You know that we abuse ourselves much more than that. The way we judge ourselves is the worst judge that ever existed. If we make a mistake in front of people, we try to deny the mistake and cover it up. But as soon as we are alone, the judge becomes so strong. The guilt is so strong and we feel so stupid or so bad or so unworthy. 
we have the need to be accepted and to be loved by others but we cannot accept and love ourselves the more self love we have the less we will experience self abuse self abuse comes from self rejection and self rejection comes from having an image of what it means to be perfect and never measuring up to that ideal our image of perfection is the reason we reject ourselves it is why we don't accept ourselves the way we are and why we don't accept others the way they are and i would like to close with words from the same book by Lennon Untamed and i quote I wanted to be a good girl, so I tried to control myself. I chose a personality, a body, a face, and a sexuality so tiny I had to hold my breath to feed myself inside. Then I promptly became very sick. Over time, I walked away from my cages. I slowly built a new marriage, a new faith, a new world view, a new purpose. a new family and a new identity by design instead of default from my imagination instead of my indoctrination from my wild instead of my ta- training close code that is so amazing it is so amazing it is so amazing i love those words how it earned it but then the question still remains who were you before you became who the world told you to be